Good afternoon to you, Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Saturday, the 22nd of September 2018. Going to try to get through this pretty quickly because bandwidth is starting to run out. Well, not the bandwidth, but the data. I'm going to have to go over to Five Guys where there's a Wi-Fi hotspot publicly available and do my work from over there a couple times a day. Man, I've already burned through like $900 of prepaid data Hey, it's a business expense. you got to do what you got to do, but I think I've reached my limit. Nevertheless, let's get on with it. We have a yellow X, and this area, a mm, little bit more of a chance for development over the next few days. That being said, do not worry too much about it here along the coast of the Carolinas. It could be an inclement weather maker. Yes, maybe some gale force winds along the east side of this low pressure area. It's not exactly the leftovers of Florence. It has maybe a little bit of the DNA from Florence, so to speak, but most of Florence's energy was stretched out up here, and a lot of it went out over the Atlantic. A piece of the overall weather feature broke south, and here it is. So for people to say that it's the return of Florence is inaccurate. It's maybe a little bit... Um, but that's about it, okay? And it's not going to, going to amount to too much. But anything right now is probably enough to give you some anxiety. So we'll talk about it. We'll make sure we keep it in the proper context. Uh, Tropical Depression 11 falling apart as an overall sort of sinking pattern is developed over here. Upper level winds are too strong as well. This will go on to develop over time and just mill around out in this area doing all kinds of things. Who knows where it'll end up, but it's going to be on the map for quite a while. And you're going to see a big hole in the sea surface temperature anomaly chart there after about 10 days. I kid you not, that's going to be around for about 10 days. And then we have Tropical Storm Kirk. And this one's of more concern because the forecast takes it assuming that it survives. And you never know, the pattern could change down here. This could be succumbing to the hostile conditions that... Uh, thwarted the efforts of TD number 11. And so that would be fine for you folks here in the Lesser Antilles, I'm sure. Nevertheless, it's about a week away. Going to move quickly, so maybe less than a week away, five, six days out, you could be feeling the effects from this. Fortunately, conditions out in this region are not like they were this time last year, and so we're not dealing with the potential yet of a powerful hurricane or anything like that. We know how intensity forecasts can change. This could dissipate into an open wave. It could be a hurricane. We know this by now. We know the limitations. So let's just make sure we stay on top of this as it moves generally westward and then tries to turn a little bit more to the west-northwest. You folks here right down the middle of the windwards and leewards, just keep an eye on it over time. I'll help you. I'll help you do that. All right, out here looking at satellite imagery, from Levi Cowan's website, tropicaltidbits.com. Big non-tropical upper level and mid-level trying to get to the surface, complicated feature uh, right here. And we'll watch this. This will just be interesting more than anything. Yes, there is some convection firing uh, thunderstorm activity, if you will. That's convection with this system here. Uh, and you know what? I keep forgetting. It's just my fault. Let's go to the University of Wisconsin site and just get the it's 98l okay all right i will admit i haven't I just too much going on folks i'm telling you so this is 98l and yes there is a little bit of this popcorn shower and thunderstorm activity associated with it but the pattern throughout this area is one that is not promoting upward motion in the atmosphere it's kind of a squashed pattern and as long as that stays in place this won't develop too much as it comes around and eventually probably goes something like that believe it or not but it's not going to bring that much sensible weather, weather that you can feel or notice, to North Carolina or the Outer Banks or what have you. I don't think it will. It's not impossible, but the signs are overwhelmingly in favor of this not doing much. We'll watch it, okay? We have to. Uh, TD-11, whatever. Not much there. Strong upper-level winds tearing that apart. And then here is Tropical Storm Kirk. Yep, we will watch this. It's at a low latitude as it treks on to the west with time. And again, you folks here, Barbados and the rest of the islands. Might as well keep a strong a strong eye? Sure, why not? 
a close eye uh, over the next few days to see what happens. In the Gulf, the Caribbean, a little bit of percolation going on here uh, near Central America, not much to worry about. This is a front that's not making much progress because this big fat area of high pressure is still sitting out here and we have this tropical disturbance south of Mexico. Something's always trying to come together it seems so we'll just wait and see what happens and where things do come together and we'll react accordingly. Looking at the GFS just the uh, you know give you a little shot at what's happening this is the east coast of North America Carolina coast there's Florida on around the Yucatan, Central America, North Coast of South America, West Coast of Africa over here, and Bermuda's hiding in here somewhere. Let me find it. Got to play find the island. Uh, it's hard to find it with all that motion going on, but what I want to show you, that's the impulse, 98L. And you can see it's really not that big of a problem. It comes in towards the Carolinas, very weak, probably a low-level swirl, maybe a few rain showers, you know, it's not round in appearance like that. That's the system invest area 90L, I do believe it is. Um, so don't worry about 98 right there too much, 98L. And remember why they call them that? They call them that so that people like me don't just keep saying this disturbance and that disturbance and whatever. It's a numbering system, the letters are the numbers 90 through 99, and the letter L for Atlantic. Technically, we call it AL. 99 or 90 or 91 or whatever but for us weather nerds we just shorten it to 98L it's just an investigation an area of interest and we label it people in the weather world the hurricane center whatever invest area 98L uh, and then when you get to 99 you start over at 90 again it's just what they do I don't know who started it but there you go also Kirk let's just track that along fairly identifiable in the model field way out here in the open Atlantic where there are no weather balloons or upper air features, maybe some jets passing through that can provide a little bit of an, a sample to the environment. So we'll watch it. It stays viable all the way through to the Northeast Caribbean. As you can see the track that I drew there, it follows that. Uh, you know, five, six days away, could bring some showers and thunderstorms. Could be nothing. Could be a hurricane. You know, I'll be straight up with you. You just don't know. The, nature has just been strange these last couple of years where we're getting rapidly intensifying hurricanes Irma, Maria, etc. Harvey and then we thought that uh, Florence as bad as it was was forecast to be just shy of category 5 and it did anything but instead it translated its energy laterally out over a huge area and pushed an enormous surge into the coastal area it slowed down and dumped its energy out in the form of rain and so what you lost in terms of and thank goodness for it a major punch from wind and it was bad enough we made up for with water so who knows all right let's get rid of this and take a look at the cape fear river this is where i live not on the river but in wilmington and over the next few days all of these peaks and troughs that you see let's use a different color orange will that stand out yep these are your highs and lows, your tides, your tide cycles. And look right through here, that's trouble. Downtown Wilmington could see a couple of inches higher than Florence, which brought, and if this is up to date, I think it is, 8.2 feet the record, Florence has that. And it was just a little bit shy of that that Matthew set two years ago. When was the last record before Matthew? 1954. So we've had two records broken in two years 2016 with Matthew storm surge 2018 with Florence storm surge up the Cape Fear River and now it could exceed that or approach that record which right there they're forecasting let me zoom in on it. I want to show you this this is what's it doing nope don't do that <laughs> sorry uh, can I see the image by itself you sure can look at that right there 8.2 feet is what they're forecasting the records 8.2 feet and so we're going to have three records matched or broken all within a two-year time frame. Maybe it breaks the record and goes to 8.3 or 8.4. Depends on the volume of water coming down the Cape Fear River Basin uh, from upstream. So elsewhere, just to show you real quick, good news in that a lot of these rivers up here in the eastern parts of the Carolinas are falling, with the exception of down here in Conway. You've heard a lot about this. A horrible situation for the people. I feel for you. You went through it during Matthew. 
and you're going to go through it again. It's still days away from cresting. For you that are interested in getting back to the Wilmington area, your key to doing that, we need to see these purples here uh, go green again, or at least yellow. Maybe not so much that one, but if I mouse over these, Northeast Cape Fear River near Burgall, it's falling, but it's still above the record. All right, so let me just click on that so I can show you. It's still above the record, folks, and because it's still above the record, there's no way I-40, which goes right through this zone, can drain. And so it's got to get down here to moderate flood stage, and that's not going to happen until Wednesday. Ugh. So just what can I tell you? Uh, we're just getting by, doing the best we can. Cajun Navy, I heard, running out of supplies. You know what's bad? When the Cajun Navy runs out of supplies. I saw somebody mentioning on Facebook, can we get the Cajun Navy some more supplies? Wow. Hey, I just want to remind you real quick, because if I don't, I can't do this. <laughs> Patreon, a wonderful way to crowdfund people like me who bring you the truth in what's happening with weather. I stick a camera out there, multiple cameras. They show you exactly what's happening, and it is what it is. The discussions that I do here, the analysis, everything about it, that's what I do for a living. And most of that is supported by folks on Patreon, this wonderful, relatively new method of crowdfunding where you don't just say here's some money thanks for your work mark but i can use the tools that patreon uh, provides with their app and their online uh and look i'll show you what it looks like their online portal and i can provide you a little bit of insider information so to speak you know that little extra edge you know i can go in here and i can make a post i can put videos up right there text in anything it's amazing what you can do and it's all right here on Patreon. Levi Cowan, Tropical Tidbits, he's also on Patreon. So please help us to help you. It's a nice little ad in here, too. You can watch that. It tells you all about, well, why should I support you on Patreon? What's in it for me? Well, like public radio, we are supported mostly by the public. Uh, some folks do it just to offset server costs. I'm doing it as a means to have a living. You know, I work with the Weather Channel, but that's not year-round. I'm not, I'm not Jim Cantore's salary. <laughs> I mean, so I need your help, all right? So please consider anywhere from a dollar to, hey, you can even do a $3,000 support pledge, and you'll be right there next to me on the next mission. Uh, and that's the truth. Go in and read the tiers. There's, there's incentives to say, hey, look, help us out. Me, other people that are doing stuff like this, uh, weathernerds.org, those people. Um, Levi Cowan, as I mentioned. I just want to make sure you understand that we're not all sitting on big sums of money doing this because we have nothing else to do. For me, it's my job. And my job is done for the day. I am Mark Suddeth for HurricaneTrack.com, hanging out here in Wilmington, North Carolina, where the Cape Fear River is going to be rising. I guess the old phrase, Lord willing and the creek don't rise, will not apply over the new next few days because the creek's rising uh, and the Lord wasn't willing in this situation. We know the sun will come out. It'll all dry up and we'll all be good to go again. It's just going to take a bit of time. Hang in there, everybody. We'll get through it together. Thanks for watching. I'll have more for you tomorrow.